Hello intelligent beings of the Etherweb, and today will be a tale of IREX 2019 exhibition. IREX, or International Robot Exhibition, is one of the major Japanese industry exhibitions that focus on robotics. Others of a similar scale would be Robodex, newer World Robot Expo and Summit, and in a lesser extent Siatec. Those are serious exhibitions for serious business people, and IREX is focused more on industrial robotics. Mitsubishi Electric appropriately filled the adjacent Tokyo big site Yurika Mome station with posters. Reading about IREX 2005 was my first introduction to Android robotics, and IREX was a place for many androids and human age robots to first appear. IREX 2017, the exhibition takes place every two years, lacked any androids, and as I expected from the list of exhibitors, IREX 2019 would too. Still, visiting exhibitions like that is the best way to familiarize yourself with the major trends in the field, and is quite fun. And IREX could be visited for free if you register in advance. IREX 2019 took place in Tokyo Big Side Exhibition Center, but unlike 2017, it was broken in multiple pavilions. The funny thing about visiting industry exhibitions and how awkward a raccoon feels surrounded by serious business people in suits. Time to look serious in business. Technically, cameras aren't allowed unless you're registered as a journalist. But most booths themselves do allow cameras, it brings publicity. One of the first was the booth of Taiwan with Solomon Corporation highlighted in the center. Another pavilion was greeted with a Korean booth. THK had a large display of different small scale robots performing packaging tasks. Small scale collaborative robots are the most intriguing development in industrial robotics these days. Traditional industrial robotics requires large investments and safety measures installed as robots must operate in isolated areas. Collaborative robots are designed to work alongside people. They are much more versatile and automating becomes much easier. The main topic of robotics exhibitions last decade seems to be automation of new fields. At one side you have warehouses. But why not automate a grocery shop? With machine vision, multiple new grasping techniques, there's all sorts of new potentials. No need to rely on poor work conditions on People's Republic of China anymore. Of course, traditional industrial robotics isn't going anywhere. And like this SMC booth shows, interesting stuff happens beyond the soft-looking manipulators. One of the displays that intrigued me much was a system by Takamatsu Engineers Corporation, used for picking and sorting of seashells. If sea farming can be automated, why not land farming? Fanuk, as usual, heard a large area. Last time they brought a giant robot to pick up a car. Now, on your way to toilet, there was a part of Airbus 380 engine housing, almost hanging over your head. Omron is most known in private sector for their medical devices, but they sure do have a place in IROX. These kind of displays are most popular to demonstrate precision. Fast precision. Futaba, a manufacturer of hobby and not so hobby parts, had brought different small scale projects to demonstrate their versatility. Including a hobby project, this robotic doll named Alice. On the right from Alice was F Hand with NADO labeling. NADO had their own booth too. Kondo, another hobby serum manufacturer, was also present. Virtual reality for happy hacking life. As expected, there were no androids. No Oryx Rentek with Mirai Madoka, no Toshiba with Chihiro Sisters, no Kokoro Dreams with Hectroids. Humanoid robots were lacking too. CIG had brought their Pepper Light platform. Seed Robotics had their robot in the dining area. Shiorin, a teleoperative humanoid robot with a cute, although not animated face, was hired by Mini Bimisumi. Squeeze robot hand, on which I posted another video. Toyota been bringing their new heavy duty teleoperative humanoid robot platform recently, attracting huge crowds. This kind of heavy duty humanoid robot's been gaining traction recently, with them being considered viable for disaster robotics. 
The tail operation movements were also mirrored on small robots representing Someiti and Mirai Tova mascots of 2020 Olympics. Disaster robotics in general was quite well present on IROX. The field of course was motivated by 2011 Tohoku earthquake and tsunami. Frigo M actually worked in Fukushima Daiichi. Quite intriguing was the display of upcoming Fukushima robot test field. It will be a place to test all sorts of disaster robots. The most noticeable difference between the previous and the latest Arrex was the arrival of exoskeletons on the market. Previously they have been shown in research and development. Nowadays their prices, multiple units are used and sold, and affordably. Chances are your port luggage in Japan will be offloaded by a person in one of those. The suits are also planned to be used in medical field. Speaking of which, how about a massage with a giant robotic hand? Japan and Korea are curious and have both countries lead in robotics. Japan is famously associated with robots, but seeing robots in the wild is not as easy, and industry exhibitions present a nice opportunity even if you are not an industry specialist. In the background here, by the way, is the booth of RT Corporation. The question now, will those large exhibitions feature more of social robots in the future? Humanoid robots and droids, or we are now entering a period when the wow factor of Actroids and Chihira sisters run out? Also, I wonder, why so many pavilions? Part of the exhibition was only reachable by a bus. Could it mean that IROX has trouble hiring best exhibition spaces and had to divide? Or is it a positive thing, meaning that the exhibition is sort of spilling because of too much stuff? Progressive raccoon hugs, everyone! Remember to subscribe here and on Patreon, and remember that all good robots have a big red button!